Hi class, welcome back to Advantage. My name is Matt Fisher, I'm your accounting professor. In today's video, we're gonna go over the closing process. In a previous video, we prepared the statement of owner's equity using the trial balance. We're gonna use the same information in this video to go through the closing process. This closing process is necessary for us to start our new year. So, first of all, let's take a look at this trial balance that we've been using previously. You can see it's the same numbers that we had before, and off to the side, you can see the income statement. The income statement shows the revenues of 7,000, which is coming from our trial balance, and it shows in this example just one expense. Now, most businesses will have several or many expenses, but for our example, we just have one expense, utility expense of $1,000. So our net income is 6,000. Now here is the statement of owner's equity. Statement of owner's equity starts with beginning capital balance, which is zero because this was a brand new company in our example. And then the owner contributed $50,000 during this year. So there's the $50,000 for this period. The net income gets added to the owner's capital because the net income belongs to the owner. This is a sole proprietorship, okay? And later in the video, we'll go through these closing entries and I'll point out the journal entries, the closing entries for the sole proprietorship. And I'll also mention what they would be if this were a corporation. All right, so now let's continue on with this owner's capital account, this statement. And now the subtotal is 56,000 but the owner withdrew $3,000 during the time period, so we gotta subtract that out. So then the ending owner's capital balance is $53,000. But wait a minute, take a look at the trial balance. The trial balance says the owner's account is 50,000. That's why we need to do the closing out process. We need to move these revenues, expenses, and this withdrawal into the capital account. These accounts, the revenue expenses and withdrawal are temporary accounts. These accounts we need to zero out at the end of the year and start over again the new year with a zero balance. All the other accounts, assets and liabilities and the capital account are permanent accounts. Their balances roll over from year end to the next year. The temporary accounts need to be zeroed out so that we can start over again at zero. Now, let's take a look at the closing process. We're going to go through a four-step process with the sole proprietorship. Now, I realize some textbooks do this differently, and I'll try and explain to you the different ways that textbooks do it, but I'm going to start with the four-step process. So, in step number one, we're going to close out our revenues, and this is a sole proprietorship. We're going to close them out to income summary. So, this is a new account. Income summary is just a temporary account that we're just putting the revenues and the expenses in right now, and then we'll close it out. So the revenue, we had one revenue account in our example, so we're going to close it out. The revenue has a credit balance, so to close it, we need to debit the revenue. So in this case, we're debiting revenue 7,000 and crediting the income summary 7,000. In step number two, we need to close out the expense account. The expense accounts have debit balances. Look at our trial balance. It has debit balance. They have debit balances. So we have to credit the expense to zero it out. The expense has a debit balance. So we're going to credit it $1,000 and our debit will be to the income summary. So now our income summary has a credit of 7,000 and a debit of 1,000. So hopefully you can see there that the overall balance then in the income summary is $6,000. And that's what we do in step three. We close out the income summary to the capital account because that, that net income, the revenues minus expenses belong to the owner of the company. So we put that into income sum, into capital. So we're going to debit the income summary because it has a credit balance. So we debit the income summary, $6,000 and we credit owner's capital 6,000. So that credit increases the owner's capital, which if you think about it, makes sense because that 6,000 is our net income. So we want the owner's capital to increase $6,000. The last step is step four to close out the withdrawal account. The withdrawal account has a 3,000 debit balance. So to close it out, we're gonna have to credit it. 
So the closing entry would be debit owner's capital directly. So that will decrease owner's capital 3000 and credit owner withdrawal $3,000. Okay, now some of you are working with corporations. These journal entries are slightly different. Most textbooks that I've looked at when they deal with corporations, they do this in a three-step process. So let me just quickly mention that three-step process if this had been a corporation. In step one, they would have closed out the revenue, just like we did with the sole proprietorship. They would have closed out revenue by debiting it, and they would have credited retained earnings. Okay, retained earnings is an account that corporations use. And then the second step, they most likely would have closed out the expenses to retained earnings. So they would have debited retained earnings and credited each expense, All right? The third step, they wouldn't have done because I'm talking about, they would, they would have closed them out directly to retained earnings. We didn't use income summary, okay? So step three wouldn't have to take place for a corporation. Step four, we would have to do, which would actually be step three now. For a corporation, we would then close out, not the withdrawal account. If you remember, for corporations, it's called dividends. So dividends would be closed out by debiting retained earnings and crediting the dividends, okay? So it's, it's very similar. The accounts are just slightly different. Instead of the income summary, we're, we're closing them out directly to retained earnings. And same thing with the dividend for revenues, expenses, and dividends, all right? One more thing I wanna point out before we move on. Uh, in step one and two, we just closed out one revenue and one expense. In most businesses, you're going to have multiple revenues and multiple expenses. So you wouldn't just close out one. For example, in, in step one, when you closed out revenues, you would have closed out all of the revenue accounts. Revenues have, once again, credit balances, so you would debit every revenue account. For example, maybe consulting revenue, sales revenue, uh, interest revenue, any revenue account that you would have, you'd have to debit it to close it out. And then the same thing for the expenses. They have debit balances. You would have to close out each expense account. So you would credit a utilities expense, you would credit wage expense, you would credit rent expense, you'd credit every single expense to zero it out. And then the sum of all those would be the amount of your entry into the income summary, all right? In the last part of this video, we're gonna look at the T accounts of these accounts that are being closed out. So first of all, you can see here the income summary. And when we close out revenues, we increase or we put 7,000 credit into the income summary account. In step two, we closed out expenses. So we had to debit the income summary 1,000. Now you can see that the income summary has a $6,000 credit balance. We have to close that out, that's step three. So then to close it out, we're going to debit the income summary and we're going to credit the capital account. So in the capital account, you can see that it had the 50,000 and now we're increasing it 6,000. And then step four is to close out the withdrawal accounts. So we have to debit capital when we close out the withdrawal accounts because we're crediting uh, the withdrawal account. So we debit the capital account. So now the overall balance in the capital account is 53,000. So remember at the very beginning of this video, we showed that in the statement of owner's equity, the ending balance should be 53,000, and now it is. After we've closed out revenues, expenses, and withdrawals, the ending balance is $53,000 in the capital account. All right, class, I hope this video has helped you out. Uh, most likely you might need to watch it uh, one or two more times and then go through your textbooks just to verify that they're doing it the same way. Sometimes, like I said, some textbooks do this a little bit differently. They're following the basic same principle, but some textbooks do this for sole proprietorships in three steps. Most corporate form textbooks do this in three steps, which I already explained in the video. Well, class, good luck, and I hope to see you in the next video.